It's a miracle you made it to work today. People like to be close to their friends when they're dying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't you want to say I look terrible? I look rotten. Go ahead, say it. <coughs> it may interest all of you to know that I was out on business. Well, the crib is investing in a tequila factory. Uh -huh. I met with a new county consultant. We had dinner at a Mexican joint. Intravenously? We had some beer. Cerveza? Some margaritas. I'll lay. Two rounds, maybe three. Three drinks did this to you? Pictures. You're lucky you made it home. I put the car on autopilot. I used to do that. Lived in the same apartment for six years. My car always brought me home. Then I moved. And my car kept bringing me back to where I used to live. That must have been very embarrassing. Not really. This incredible blonde designer had moved in. I wound up there three times in one week. The last time sober. Why do you do this to yourself if it's so painful? Occupational hazard. It's hard to avoid. Oh, how's that? Say, um, say you have a source from the vice squad. Where are you going to arrange to meet? In a frozen yogurt stand? Mm -hmm. Salad bar? I've done that. I'm sure. Lou, you want me to get you some coffee? No, I better. I better get it myself. I think my mortis is setting in. Morning. Yeah. Not with you. 
I went to a Mexican restaurant last night. Food poisoning? Worse yet, tequila. Well, yeah, I ought to go home. Tough it out. Can't get sick pay for self-inflicted wounds. <laughs> so what's eating you? Oh, my car was broken into last night. Okay, it happens. What'd they do, get the plants to the nuclear sub? They got my tape deck. Tore it right out of the dash. Hmm. Where did it happen, at home? Oh, in town. We went to the theater. I found this place right on the street so I didn't have to park in the lot. Hmm. They smashed the whole window breaking in. At least you saved the two bucks on parking. What gets me, what really gets me is there were people all around. There's a guy who runs a hot dog stand. There was a parking lot attendant nearby. Nobody saw a thing. Oh, that's too bad. It's like that girl who got mugged in her apartment house last week. Four neighbors heard it, and nobody called the cops. They're afraid to get involved. You know, other newspapers have set up a kind of informant's hotline. Folks reporting on crimes anonymously. I was thinking maybe we could set up something like that. Even offer rewards. We could call it Private Eye or something. What do you think? I think the next time you should spend the two bucks and stick the car in a lot. Oh, it could work, I suppose. Still... It will work. Tell you, Mrs. Pension, I have examined this program from every possible angle, and it will work. Oh, I realize a private eye program is feasible, Mr. Hume. Well, what's the problem? Well, I'm just not convinced that the function of the Tribune is to turn its readers into stool pigeons and snitches. Thanks. Concerned, involved citizens. Well, if they were so involved, they'd get organized without our help. You know, I'm a good citizen, Mrs. Pinchon, but I know that I'd be more inclined to help if there were one number I could call where I knew that the people at the other end would be interested. Listen, we cooperate with police agencies all the time. We run pictures of suspects. We ask our readers to call with information. The private eye program is just the same thing, except more organized. We already have people organized to do that now. They are called police. They catch crooks. That's their job. Our job is to write about it. What about our social responsibility, Mr. Pinchon? Don't you think we have to contribute more than ball scores or grocery bargains? I am not unaware of our social responsibilities, Mr. Hugh. This private eye program could save somebody's life. Look, when somebody's afraid to call the police, the system is broken down. The criminal gets a break, and the poor slob who reports the crime leaves himself wide open for revenge. What do you think the reaction would be of the police? Supportive. I've already spoken with them. Two representatives would like to discuss the program with us. Oh, I see. Well, I'll um, check with my secretary, and I'll let you know when I'm free. I've already checked with your secretary. They're waiting downstairs in my office. You're free now. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A&E. Who are these guys in Charlie's office? They look like cops. They are cops. Were they looking for me? What have you done? Nothing. So the calls come into the trip. We'll start with five lines at first. Your people forward the information on us. How do we know that some callers won't take advantage of the system to report innocent people? Oh, suspect identified by private eyes, just that, a suspect. We still have to make our own case independent of the tip that we expect it to hold up in court. Besides, the people with the acts to grind other people call us anyway. And the callers are guaranteed anonymity. That's our department. We assign the callers code numbers. If the tip leads to a conviction, the reward is paid to the appropriate number. I think you'd be surprised. In some cities, 70% of the tips come from people who don't even want money. I don't mind telling you, this makes me very, very nervous, gentlemen. It's worked before. Sacramento, San Francisco. Albuquerque, Detroit. All over the country, these programs have helped to solve thousands of crimes and put the bad guys behind bars. Publicity can't hurt, and we could get the jump on major crime stores. Exactly. The community can only benefit when the police and the press work together, instead of being suspicious of each other. Well, there's nothing wrong with a little healthy suspicion, Lieutenant Richards. Our job is to inform the public. Yours is to protect it. Neither of us is in business to help the other. And frankly, I like to be careful about whom the Tribune climbs into bed with. I think our department can stand up under your scrutiny, Mrs. Pinchon. It will have to. Very well. Let's give it a shot. This rounds on me, Molly. 
And more nachos? Hey, some more nachos. On me, too. Boy, everything worked like a charm today. I was good, and the cops really came through. They just went in there, they gave me the facts, and she had to say yes. I'll drink to your strategy with Mrs. Pinchon, Charlie, but I'm not too crazy about asking my reporters to help the cops by answering phones. Hard enough getting some of them to do their assignment. Yeah, well, Rosal's lucky he gets paid by the week. If he got paid by the word, he'd starve to death. <laughs> Sounds like a good man for phone duty. Mm. Listen, the newsroom is the perfect place to run this program. Funny. I had this wild idea the newsroom was for, well, you know, news. You watch. I'll bet you we get some great stories out of this, too. Hey, you think we should order another round now before happy hour is over? Thanks anyway, Charlie, but I'm happy enough already. Yeah, somebody will drink it. I don't feel very happy yet. We we'll almost forgot. Can you run me over to the car rental? Where's your car? It's still in the shop, waiting for a new window. They're back ordered from the factory. All broken and tape deck robbed. Hmm. Did you know that there are guys who do nothing but hit cars for their stereos? If you want to make it in a world of crime these days, you got to specialize. I had a pair of pants taken out of my car. Left a perfectly good pair of loafers and took the pants. <laughs> Some guy stole the ficus tree and a huge tuberous begonia in a pot right off my front steps. I mean, I can understand somebody stealing if they're hungry, but plants? Mm. It's a jungle out there. <laughs> Stepped on my front steps. I hate to admit this about myself, but it's just too dangerous out there. I fought it for a long time, but I bought some protection. No, oh, that's crazy. What are you doing? You're going to end up shooting off your foot. With a money belt? I bought a money belt. No kidding. You wear it all the time? No. It's too much of a hassle getting to the money. I only wear it when I travel. Or if I think I might be in a dangerous situation like getting stuck with a tab. <laughs> this is practically to your house. I still don't see why you couldn't just rent a car downtown. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, let me help you turn around. <laughs> see? Lou, because this is near where I live, it's also near where my car is being fixed. Look. If I rented a car downtown, I'd have to turn it in there. I'd have to take a bus home. I'd have to get Marion to drive me over to the garage. He's hardly ever home before they close, you see? Yeah, sure. So I really had no choice, Lou. Yeah, lots of choices, Charlie. They're big and yellow, and they're called cabs. Come on back. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Good, 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 good. What was that? Oh. It's okay, Lou. It's just the taillight. You didn't hurt the pole. Continue in a moment here on A and B. Evening. See a driver's license, please. Sure. Here it is. Thank you. I'm going to check on this. One of your tail lights is out, Mr. Grant. Uh, yeah, you see that that just happened. It, it wasn't my fault. Uh, I'll get it fixed in the morning. Honest. 
Have you been drinking, Mr. Grant? No, not really. Oh, one or, one or two after work, you know, happy hour. I didn't stay long enough to get happy. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry about the taillight. You mind stepping out, please? No, not at all. Step over the curb. Right there, that'll be fine. Whoa. Now, would you please put your feet together? Extend your arms to your side. Watch your head back. Now close your eyes. I did? That's fine. Get your head back more. Uh, you know, this is really silly. Uh, I'm, I'm fine, really. I understand. Now, when I tell you, I want to see you touch the tip of your nose with the tips of your fingers. Okay? First to right. It's a little tricky. That's fine. Now the left. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, let me do it again. I think I've got the hang of it now. Mr. Grant, I'm going to ask you to come down to the station and undergo further testing. If the right remains silent... Well, I, I know why, right, but this, this really isn't necessary. It won't take very long. And if you pass the test, you'll be free to go. Look, tonight, tonight I'm fine. Uh, just, just fine. Now, if you had stopped me last week, last week you would have really had... You see, last, last week I would have deserved it. But this... This, this is a mistake. That's it. Harder. Hard as you can. <coughs> uh, how do I do? Point one two. Is that good? Perfect. Like this, right? Uh huh. Now put your head back. Close your eyes. Five bucks says you can't do it. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Not so fast. Now the left. Oh come on. This is a snap. <laughs> Five bucks. What's this? A new parlor game? Hey, boss. Jail ain't been built and old you. You look swell. Okay, who all knows this? Hey, just us, Big Lou. The whole gang. And the television stations. <laughs> and radio. And the newspapers. Driscoll called it in. It was on the police log. Hey, Chief. I brought you something from the slammer. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> nice Christmas card. Did you do the nose touch test? Almost, yeah. Oh, that's mine. And could you walk a straight line? Standing or crawling? <laughs> Private eye. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. No, sir, I don't think we pay for that information. We want you to pay us for hearing it. Yeah. Nut. I can't believe you're taking those calls. I wouldn't do it. You weren't asked. Ah, they know better than to ask. I'm paid to be a reporter, period. You upset because you weren't asked? They wouldn't dare ask. They know I wouldn't do that menial stuff. Rossi, I need you. Take care of the stack of obituaries, will you? Lunch. Oh, I can't, Rossi. I'm on phone duty for private eye till one. How did you get roped into that? Volunteers. Oh, shrewd, Adam. Very shrewd. You like listening to a bunch of shut-ins reporting kids who spray paint walls. Oh, no, they're not all like that. In fact, some of them are very interesting. Oh, yeah? Like what? I can't tell you. It's confidential. Private eye. Hello, my name is Kevin. No, 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 no. Don't give your name. I'm calling about murder. Yes, ma'am. Your identification number will be 410. Uh, tell me about the murder. Oh, well, that's not exactly news. We had that story this morning. Yes, but I'm sure I saw who did it. You say you saw who did it? That's what I was saying. I had a feeling they were using a lot of drugs over there. All those parties. Well, I saw a man emerge from the house early yesterday. He'd been there before, too. Drove off in one of those fancy little foreign cars. I have the last three digits of the license, if you think they'd help. Yes, ma'am. Anything you can recall about the license might be very helpful. It was 636. You know, one of those blue plates, not the black. Yes, ma'am. Where the hell have you been? We've got 
10 minutes. Easy, Lou. I was talking with the city attorney. So it's all taken care of? Nothing is taken care of. He won't budge. Thinks he has a good case. Does he? Blue point one zero is considered legally under the influence. How much worse is point one two? I can get you off with six months. Just kidding, Lou. Relax. You know you're lucky. Pretty soon the penalty is going to be much tougher. Mm. Besides, they got you. I checked the machine. It was serviced properly. The tests were properly administered. The arresting officers went by the book. What about a uh, technicality? Those were the technicalities. So what happens now? They can take your license, but I don't think that'll happen. We can fight them and ask for a jury trial, which will cost you a bunch of money and legal fees are probably the same results. What are my options? Look very, very contrite. Maybe it'll work. Apart from the lawyers, you're the only guy on calendar wearing a suit. So you think I should plead guilty? You are, aren't you? Come on, I'll explain it all to you. Joyce Kelly, Octavio Hernandez, Robert Parsons, and Louis Grant. You are sentenced to 180 days in county jail. Suspended. $375 fine, reducible by $100, providing you complete drinking driver school. Mr. Grant, approach the bench. Mr. Grant, since you are an editor of the Los Angeles Tribune, a man in an influential position, in addition to your fine, you are sentenced to three weekends of community service. But get there any way you can. Just don't miss the briefing. How's it going? Well, they got a suspect in the Beachwood murder. Thanks, private eye. Really? That was our tip? Cops are bringing him into that underground courthouse entrance in half an hour. It's ours exclusive. Part of the payoff for the tip. It really was our tip that brought the suspect in. I mean, they said that? Oh. What do you know? Rossi, give me the story with a slant on the private eye program. I mean, there's no harm in blowing our own horn, is there? No, no, not if he's guilty. Listen, Charlie. Huh. They got a suspect in that beach with things. Yeah, so I hear. Boy, that's great. The old lady who called in figures to make a few bucks. Or I should say a few pounds, since she had an English accent. What else do we know about her? I can't tell you anything. It's an anonymous program. People don't fill out applications. How much are we paying for a murderer these days? 2,500 bucks, top of the line. Why? You don't think people lie for that kind of money, do you? I think some people would kill for that kind of money. Counselor, Mr. Sandler, hold up a minute. Joe Rossi, Tribune. Roger Sandler, leaving. Look, I'm interested in your client's side of the story. It's obvious that the Tribune's interest is a vested one, Mr. Rossi. Hey, I'm just a reporter trying to do my job. As far as I'm concerned, as long as the Tribune has that private eye program, you guys aren't reporters, you're vigilantes. Well, I think you might be right. You do. Might be. But look, I want to get both sides of the story. If you don't talk to me, who are you going to hurt more, the Tribune or your client? Okay. My client and Danny, the murder victim, were in business together. Danny's a silent partner. Very. Now, I'm not saying that my client is any kind of a boy scout, but he's never been involved in any kind of violent crime. He's clean, he has nothing to worry about. He's got plenty to worry about. He's accused of murder by an anonymous witness who won't come forward, and there's a big-time newspaper throwing its weight around trying to put him in jail. And he's innocent. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Want to make painting easier? a and returns to Lou Grant. Well, I guess we have quite a crew. Secretary, waitress, film producer, painter, newspaper editor, couple mechanics, and you're the unluckiest bunch I ever saw. Yeah, amen to that, Jack. I mean, busted two blocks before I reached my house. You came up two blocks short. The young lady's foot slipped off the brake. That gentleman there's had a busted tail light and was helping a friend. What does that tell you? No good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> <laughs> Tells me you're all kidding yourselves. You're here because you were driving under the influence, and I won't lecture you. I don't care if you drink yourselves into a stupor every night. Just don't drive when you do it. Yeah, but I was barely over the limit. I mean, point one one. That's a legal limit. Let's talk about reality. 
Each time you drink, you put this much alcohol into your system. 0.02. One or two drinks, you're twice as likely to have an accident. Three or four drinks, the odds are six times as great. But if you score 0.11 to 0.15, 25 times as great, you're an accident looking for a place to happen. But those are just statistics. A lot of accidents are minor. Fine. Let's talk about the ones that aren't. Would someone please turn off the lights and push the forward button on the projector? Thank you. Mr. Jurgensen? Blue Grant. Oh, hi. Call me, Bob. Well, uh, interesting class. I didn't agree with all of it, but it's better than I expected. No, you didn't. What didn't you agree with? I guess it's applying the same scale to everyone. Uh, I'm not saying you should drink and drive, but different people have different tolerances. And you know guys that can belt down a pint of booze and drive as if they're sober? Yeah, some guys can handle their booze better than others. I guess you're not one of them, or you wouldn't be here. So I told those jerks, if they knew me half as well as you knew me, they'd feel lucky. Tough day? Yeah, tougher. So how do you feel about the judge denying your motion to have the case thrown out? I think the court made a mistake. Uh, see, I'm a defense attorney. That doesn't mean I support crime. I just happen to believe in constitutional rights. Such as? A man is innocent until proven guilty. Your private item program tends to shift the burden of proof onto the poor schlub on trial. Your client owns a fancy French restaurant and drives a $50,000 Ferrari. That's hardly a poor schlub. Okay, a rich schlub. Look, he was at the scene of the murder th that day. His fingerprints were all over the place. They were partners, Rossi. My client's in the house three, four times a week, and I still think he's entitled to face his accuser. So what's your next step? I'm making a separate motion to force the trip to reveal the source of the information. Oh, good luck. That's privilege. I think when a guy is on trial for his life, he's entitled to a few privileges. Did you get anything good at that political luncheon? The salad was okay. Why? Well, I don't want to put you off a story. Pull away. I'm writing it, and I'm bored. Well, I've been kicking around this idea for a piece that might not be so boring. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm you, you see, I've been taking this class, and it's got a lot of interesting stuff. Sounds great. Stuff. Oh, for the paper. Half of the traffic fatalities over Labor Day in California were attributed to booze. We had that story, though. Well, no, I was thinking of something about people who drive under the influence. Over a quarter million people died on this country's highways in the last decade. You know, it always bothered me how we could predict how many people would die on a holiday weekend, and nobody seems to mind. Yeah, it's like an acceptable level of carnage. You ought to talk to this instructor. Uh, his name's uh, Bob Jurgensen. Okay. What's my angle? Huh? That's what you always ask me. It's not really news, is it? So, uh, how do we get into the story? Oh, you'll think it's something. Charlie's been looking everywhere for you. I know, I know. He wants to ask him about the private eye story, Doug. Well, you afraid he won't like your angle? Look, I just got back from the courthouse. That murder suspect at Trib Nail just might be innocent. Mm -hmm. See, the man's innocent until he's proven guilty. I know, Rossi. I got an A in civics. And even if he is guilty, he still has a right to face his accuser. I mean, somebody could be setting him up just for the reward money. What do you think? The police make the case on its own merits. The tip won't be used as evidence. I think you're still upset you weren't asked to help answer phones. Private eye. Yes, it is. Go right ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, thanks anyway. I'm Joe Rossi from the Los Angeles Tribune. Oh, we already paid this month. No, I'm, I'm not collecting, ma'am. I'm a reporter. Uh, uh, I wondered if I could talk to you for a minute about 
the trouble the other day. You mean the murder? Uh, yeah. I don't know anything about it. I wasn't even here. Oh, that's fine. Does a woman with an English accent live here with you, a relative maybe, or a friend? No, I thought the police already had a suspect. They do, they do. I'm, I'm just curious. Does it sound like anyone you know around here? I mean, it's a small neighborhood, I thought. Maybe... No, no. I lived here six years. I don't know anybody with an English accent, a man or a woman. Well, thanks for the trouble. Sorry I couldn't be any help. Oh, listen, maybe you could do me a favor. I'll try. We called to cancel the paper, and they keep delivering it. Now, maybe they listen to one of their reporters. Will you tell them? Mrs. Brown, you obviously know the address. So I'll see what I can do. Listen, the people next door, uh, I've tried there, and I can't get an answer. Uh, that house is up for sale. I noticed. No, they moved out a month ago. Rossi! Over here. Anybody for another round? I'm by. Thanks, says Mr. Wardy. I'm fine. You're certainly cheerful. I have every reason to be. You got your car back. No, don't mention my car. You'll impress me. No, no, no. It's just that we, we, we just want another round of the private eye case. Terrific. Well, it is terrific. The judge in the Beechwood case refused to allow disclosure of the witness who gave the tip. Charlie, this isn't a battle of wills. This guy's on trial for murder. Yeah, thanks to us. We shouldn't be so quick to condemn him. Oh, but it's all right for you to condemn the program, right? Where is that story I asked you for about all the good it's done? I'm not so sure we can prove it yet. Uh-huh. Well, the Times is pretty sure. One of their reporters wants to interview me about it. I, I mean, the competition is interested, and I have to fight my own reporter to do the story. Hey, fellas, relax. Rossi will do the story. This is happy hour, remember? Say, Lou, mm. you know that drunk driving story you asked me about? Mm. I think I found a way into it, but I need your help. Good idea. Go with an expert. Um, I don't know. What am I supposed to do? I challenge you to a drunk driving test. A what? A drunk driving test. Get snockered to the legal limits and see how it affects your reflexes. Why? Because uh, your Mr. Jurgensen says it's part of an experiment, a chance to find out how valid the legal limits are. I'm well enough if you are. <laughs> no. You're the one writing the story. It'd be good background for you. Who's buying the booze? The cops. You can't lose. You, you realize, of course, that our weight difference means that I can handle a lot more booze than you can. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Uh -huh. I'm game. You're not so tough. <laughs> that reminds me, we have to plan for the game on Sunday. Mrs. Pinchon bought us a whole block of seats. Oh, it's going to be great. This Sunday? You know, about a week ago, we're all going. I can't. I made other plans. What could be more important than seats on a 40-yard line? Lots of things. There are people counting on me to keep my word. If you feel that way about it, can I have a ticket for Ted? Sure. Just another football game. Continue in a moment here on A and E. Lou's doing okay. Not bad at all. Let's see how he does on the reflex test. That's a minute 40 flat. That's a good first run. You ready? Put 
their time. A minute 40, but she loses points for hitting the pilot. How many runs altogether? Five, to get the drivers familiar with the course and to establish a base time for each driver. <laughs> That's the young mechanic. This is great beer, Tender. Hit me again. <laughs> Put up the monitor in the classroom. How are we doing, Officer Jersey? <laughs> I swear, you're not trying, Lou. Only a point oh six. Ah, I'm up to it. Don't worry. Come on, Billy. You're falling behind. Lou, how many ahs are there in Wahoo? How many was are there in Wahoo? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, give me a drink. Oh. <laughs> now, have you noticed yourselves getting more relaxed? Yeah. 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 Let's go. Let's show them what driving is really all about. Yeah. I know I've had a few, but I can still drive them. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. 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 Pay close attention. I want to show you how to do it. <laughs> Numero uno. <laughs> When am I going to see that story on the private eye program? I'm still working on it, Charlie. Well, one of the law enforcement groups plans to give us a plaque for community service. It'd be nice if you get that into your article. Uh-huh. Rossi, what the devil are you doing? Well, I went up to the Beechwood area to see if I could find that witness, but so far, no luck. I figured it could help the story. You what? I wanted to see if there was a street that I missed that could have had a view of the house, but I don't think so. Do you realize what you're doing? The identity of that witness is sacred. I don't even know if that witness even exists. You're trying to undermine the integrity of the program. Guys, uh, guys, do we have to do this here? Let's go in your office, Charlie. Come on, come on. All I said was that I try to find that witness. I canvass every house that could have had a view of the victim's house. And there's no woman with an English accent. Well, perhaps she faked the old buddy accent. Did you ever think of that? Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes. And what if there is no witness? Did you ever think of that? He is toying with the integrity of this newspaper. Our public confidence is a very fragile thing. Yes, yeah, so's honesty. I thought our reputation was built on truth, not hype. There may be something weighs this, Charlie. You're taking his side. No. But it's a capital case. All I'm saying is that it may uh, pay to uh, give it a check. Fine. You do that. You turn that damn canyon upside down. If you have to. Lou, I'm telling you there is no woman. I checked every house. And check again. Oh, let's face it, animal. We're wasting our time. What about that house? I told you. Checked it out last week. I thought I was collecting for the paper. Honest mistake? <laughs> you know, it doesn't add up. Why would someone call in a phony tip? What reason would they have? To get revenge on an enemy, sexual jealousy, malicious mischief, not to mention $2,500. That's a pretty good return on an investment of a single phone call. You may have a point. Hey, what about the for sale house? Moved out a month ago. There's somebody there now. OK, 
Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. I beg your pardon? Were you talking to me? This house is sold, but with lots of other listings in the... Here. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. I'm just so grateful you exist, and I found you before anybody else. Animal! Oh, I've been looking for you for a month. Do you know that? Oh, how I hate those ceremonies. Why do they always punish the people getting awards by broiling them in the hot sun? Would you move that chair so I could put up my leg? The joy of community service. At least we know that private eye works and that people appreciate it. The only reason we know it works is Rossi. His report squelched any doubt that the tip was legitimate and the police have a case. Well, we were indeed lucky. I was lucky. I was stupid. His investigation could just as easily have gone against us. Now, you see how vulnerable we become when we commit ourselves to taking tips from anonymous callers? It's a little like checkbook journalism. We pay for tips that lead to stories. It's not all that negative. At least we've taken a few of the bad guys off the streets. I was approached today by a group that wants to take over the Private Eye program, make it more community-based. They'd have a wide range of support from civic and business groups as well as from the Tribune. Sounds reasonable. The way I see it, you've got to be Dick Tracy or Clark Kent. But you can't be both. What do you think we should do, Mr. Hill? Jump at the offer before they change their minds. And you agree, Mr. Girl. Hell, I'd even throw in Rosenthal. And a third round draft choice. Lou, it was incredible. Fourth down, absolutely nowhere to go. And he uncorks the bomb. The bomb. Yeah, I heard on the radio. The pass must have gone 40 yards in the air and right on the money. Right on the money. It sounded exciting. Oh, it's nothing like seeing it. You had to be there. When Jones took the ball and started threading his way down the field, you have never seen a play like this in your life. Well, what's the occasion? A little party in honor of the private eye program. No kidding, that's really nice for all the good things that accomplished that. No, because it's over and nobody has to answer the phones anymore. Oh. Hey, Charlie, how's about a beer? Sure, it's a cold. Nope, this ought to help. Thanks. You should have seen me, Rossi. I was racing around those pylons. I was screeching around those curves. It's just you against the clock. Just you against the clock. Tell an animal. It's just you against the clock. See, I felt just, oh, I felt just like, oh, who's the, who's the, what's the name of a famous race car driver? Mario Andretti. Yeah, Mario Andretti. I felt just like Mario Andretti. I'm going to do it. Let's do it right now. What? I haven't finished my story. Run the course. I'm going to go back to the parking lot and run the course. Animal, they took the pylons down. The course isn't there anymore. That's OK, Lou. I remember where everything was. Animal, why don't you just take a cab home tonight? Don't need to. I got my car. Maybe you should take a cab anyway. Oh, I get it. You're worried about me. There's a lot of drunks on the road. That's right. And there isn't room for any more. Aww. <laughs> Can I charge you to the paper? If you want that to be your final gesture as a Trib employee, sure. Billy, mm -hmm. are you all right to drive? All right. I'm terrific. You should have seen me. But Ted's picking me up tonight. That's the great thing about marriage, really caring about each other. He's got my car. <laughs> well, I got to be going. You driving yourself, Lou? Of course I'm driving myself. I always leave with the person I come with. Look, don't worry, I'm fine. No way I'm going to risk another ticket, right? Yeah. See you guys later. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. <sighs> What's the matter, Luke? I won't start? No, no. The car's fine. I was just wondering if I could get a lift. Sure. No problem. You call a cab, Animal? Yeah, I won't be here for half an hour. Come on, Rossi. Be a pal. Why not? All I need is a meter. Lou, maybe it's for you. Huh? I'm out of special and everything, and then I forgot to give them to you. <laughs> Rossi! 
Dusty, hold it. Yeah. Uh, hey, can you give me a lift? My car's still in the shop. Hold up. Come on. It's not that far. Hey, Rossi, come on. <laughs> I'm Mike Wallace, November 22nd, 1963, a day seared in America's memory, the assassination of John Kennedy on the next 20th century. Tonight, only on A&E. Now, his poor judgment led to the death of an innocent man. A cop struggles to regain the respect of his peers on Police Story, next on A&E.